everyone who was born before 1980 is familiar with Advanced Gravis. It was a Canadian company founded in 1982. If you were a gamer back then, aren't you cared about music and sound in your games? Gravis Ultra Sound was a top choice. It was this exotic, expensive and unreachable dream sound card. They also produced gamepads and joysticks for PC, Apple, Nintendo, Amiga and Atari systems. At that time, Gravis was the largest manufacturer of these peripherals. However, I don't reckon anybody remembers Gravis being a joystick manufacturer. Everyone knows Gravis for their unique sound card. First sound card Gravis produced was in 1992 and they named it Ultrasound. Fans later started to call it Ultrasound Classic, mainly because every card Gravis produced was named Ultrasound and they wanted to make it clear what they're talking about. Ultrasound was kind of in name. It was one of the first PC sound cards They used 16-bit 44kHz stereo sound on one of the first sample-based sound cards. Even though it was able to play back sounds in 16-bit, you needed an additional daughter board with Crystal Chip to be able to record in 16-bit. Crystal Chip also provided Windows sound system support on Sound Blaster emulation. That's also one of the first cards that featured hardware mixer, which was a big load of computer CPU. On it was implemented first in Revision 3.7. It had 256 kilobytes of onboard RAM for loading sound banks, which could be upgraded to 1 megabyte. It's not much, but it was enough at the time. It was able to play back 32 voices simultaneously. However, maximum number of voices it could play back in 44 kilohertz was 14. Anything about that decreased the quality. It was supposed to be a direct competitor to Sound Blaster. However, it lacked support in games, compatibility with Sound Blaster was terrible, and there was no FM synthesis. I understand what they were trying to achieve. They reckoned that every new game will include ultrasound support and thus the card won't need FM synthesis or hardware sound blast emulation. Unfortunately, it didn't go exactly as they thought it will. There were a very small number of games that supported Gravis sound card and those that supported it usually needed some kind of patch. On the other hand, when the game was supported, other sound card couldn't match the quality of the ultrasound. They released many revisions with mostly minor fixes. The last one was 3.74. Ultrasound Max was next in line, released in 1994. It was basically Ultrasound Classic with the same crystal chip found on the daughter board. It came with half mega RAM, on the same as Classic, it could be upgraded to 1 MB. This was a choice for anyone who cared about sound quality at that time, gamers and musicians alike. In 1995, Gravis released Ultrasound Plug and Play. It was probably the card that led to Gravis' fall. The main chip called Interwave was produced by AMD. However, AMD had some problems delivering the bloody chip and it took so long that it caused Gravis loss of money. Another problem with Interwave was its high noise level due to the error in the chip. AMD quickly released new fixed version and Gravis exchanged broken cards for new ones. Unlike GF1 chip, playing more voices didn't degrade the quality of the playback or recording. Moreover, it was able to do it in 48kHz. There were two versions. One with no memory on board, and the second that was named Pro that featured half meg of ROM with samples. It was possible to upgrade both cards with 8MB of RAM with two 30-pin SIM modules, on much later to 16MB with hardware modification that could use 72-pin SIM modules. The card was fully backwards compatible, but only when some RAM was installed. Ultrasound ACE, which stands for Audio Card Enhancer, was kind of add-on sound card that was supposed to be sitting right next to the Sound Blaster. It didn't need any Sound Blaster compatibility, only mediability. It was directed to people with Sound Blaster that didn't want to part with the gaming standard and wanted a MIDI sound card that sounded much better when supported. Their last sound card was an Ultrasound Extreme. Since AMD screwed Gravis over and stopped delivering promised interwave chips, Gravis was forced to use the original GF1 chip. They paired it with ESS ES1688 sound chip, which was a step in the right direction. Like this, it became compatible with Sound Blaster Pro and Adlib, and it was the first time you could hear OPL FM synthesis on ultrasound card, which was Gravis's greatest weakness. Unfortunately, the old GF1 chip was very outdated. It had 1 MB of RAM on board, and it couldn't be upgraded. After that, Gravis withdrew from the sound card industry and focused on gamepads and joysticks. There were also some ultrasound clone sound cards based on either GF1 or Interwave chip. Since I don't own any, I can't report on the quality of these cards. There were many of them, but they are quite rare and expensive these days. 
As they say, the dying sun shines brightest. And Gravis shined very, very brightly. Its life was short-lived, and it practically ended when Gravis was acquired by Kensington in 1997. Ultrasounds are still my all-time favorite sound card, even though there were practically only two of them. If there's any chance you can get one, go for it, it's bloody amazing.